Stat show, and this week we're going to be looking at how on earth Paul Lambert's men can stop the force that is Guardiola's City. We're going to start with the only side to have beaten Man City so far this season, Liverpool. The Scousers' 4 3 victory was a clock masterclass, high intensity, heavy metal football. Liverpool dispossessed City 25 times, more than double the season average for City per game. This was a result of the high and intense pressing system that Klopp used, and it is clear that this disrupted City. This high pressing caused City to not be able to dominate position as they like to do, which had several results. It drastically affected their pass accuracy and in particular stopped the midfield three of Gundogan, De Bruyne and Fernandinho from controlling the game as they usually do. The high pressing also disrupted City's defence, as shown by the large amount of defensive errors committed in the match. The biggest contributor to City's errors was sweeper-keeper Edison. City's keepers and defenders' comfort on the ball is a major strength, but it can also become a weakness as Liverpool showed. It is a high-risk strategy to press so high up as it leaves space around the rest of the pitch which City can exploit, but it is something that Lambert must be considering this weekend. Once Liverpool had possession in the midfield, they transitioned it into space at speed, and this chiefly came through their dribbling, especially from the two midfielders Oxlade-Chamberlain and Wijnaldum, who had the highest dribble figures in the match. As we can see here, Liverpool exploited the areas behind City's own midfield. Due to their attacking focus, City's midfielders press high up the pitch, leaving space in behind which can be exposed if the tackler can also beat his man and get into this space. Oxley chamberlain opened the scoring exactly through this manner, and in Ndai and Allen, Stoke have two combative midfielders, confident enough to copy the direct dribbling style of Liverpool's midfield. Obviously, Stoke will struggle to meet the performance levels of Liverpool, we wouldn't be in 19th if we could. So we need to explore other ways of stopping City. And the first of these we're going to look at is Sean Dyche's approach with Burnley. Burnley have been a defensive force this season and showed this against City. Despite allowing City to take more shots than they have averaged over the season, Burnley managed to limit them to only scoring one. They did this by not allowing them to have a large amount of shots inside the box and with their signature large amount of blocking. Further up the pitch, we see that Burnley went for the exact opposite style to Klopp's Liverpool, by simply allowing City to have possession and not challenging them. They only managed to dispossess Guardiola's side five times all match, and their high PPDA indicates there was little to no pressing in the opposition's half from Burnley. But as we can see, Burnley barely managed to restrict the quality of City's chances, as shown by the high expected goals total. It appears Dice was his normal expected goals wizard self, and it is unlikely that Stoke will be able to copy Burnley's approach. So with Stoke unlikely to be able to replicate Burnley or Liverpool, it seems we have to look elsewhere for inspiration on Monday night. And in Crystal Palace, we seem to have a blend of the two styles. Palace were defensively solid in their draw with City and competent going forward, being denied all three points by a late penalty save. Palace dispossessed City at a higher amount than the average so far this season, and had a higher dribbling figure, similar to Liverpool's style. They also restricted City's shooting ability, forcing them to take shots from outside the area and in areas where City were less likely to score, shown by City's low expected goals figure compared to their season average. Going forward, Stoke are going to have to be extremely sensible with their shot selection due to the small amounts of possession Stoke will actually have on Monday. We can see the different approaches of the three sides we've looked at here, with shots represented by circles and goals represented by squares. Burnley refused to shoot until nearly in the box, unwilling to waste the small amounts of possession they had. Liverpool adopted a shoot on sight policy, relying on the godlike finishing of Mo Salah, Saido Mane and Roberto Firmino. And Palace seemed to take a mix of the two aforementioned styles once again. A promising sign for Stoke is the concentration of shots taken by Palace and Liverpool, just right of centre outside the area, peak Shakiri location. And it seems likely that if Stoke are to get anything from Monday night, then they will need some help from the mystical left foot of the Swiss international. So how do you stop Man City? Well, for Stoke, the answer appears to be play like Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace.